Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. The bounce that never end. The bulls keeping complete control yet another day in a row. We'll be watching some key resistance. Is it time to short? And we'll go over a couple little game plans as some rough ideas as to how I'm approaching the current market environment. Stay tuned. Introducing the Chart Guys Swing Report, a weekly digital publication that uses technical analysis to identify long-term market opportunities. Understand the market from a swing trade perspective. Follow institutional money as it rotates from sector to sector and make the most of the Swing Report's weekly trade opportunities with key entry and exit levels provided. Performance is tracked and updated weekly. For more information, visit us at chartguys.com. Now, let's check out some charts. So the S&P 500 has been extremely strong and essentially what you had happen is people took profit and went into cash for the election wanting to be in, in the face of political uncertainty, they didn't want to see a dump. We get political uncertainty, everybody that was worried about political uncertainty already sold and the market rips. So again, I don't care about headlines, I don't care about who the president is going to be, I don't care about any of that in my trader mindset. All I care about is this range as I've been saying for the last couple of weeks essentially, and we are at a key resistance test. Buying support paid off, Let's see if shorting resistance pays off. That being said, if you are going to short resistance, you have to have a game plan and a stop loss. For me, my style, when I'm looking at longer term setups, I scale in. So maybe today I make my initial bearish entry and then tomorrow, let's use SPY just as an example for some actionable signals. Let's just say I enter, if I wanna have a swing bear position for the potential that we remain in a weekly equilibrium, I wanna see a entry today at 351, let's say, and I would make a second entry if we see some green tomorrow at 353. And then I put my stop maybe just above 355 because we know market makers, specifically on the short term, I've been seeing it a lot more this year, but just breaking resistance straight into a pullback and breaking support straight into a bounce. So that is certainly a possibility as well. But if I'm making a short entry, I have to keep in mind my the lessons I've learned over the last three years. And the lessons I've learned is if I'm looking at what a normal stock or commodity or crypto or anything would give me as an equilibrium as the most likely scenario, if anybody is going to disregard that and just shoot up straight to a new high, it's the S&P 500. So I absolutely must protect and not get stuck in a massive short squeeze heading to new highs. There are a lot of people, in my opinion, still that are on the sidelines and are trying to wait for a daily higher low to be looking for an entry. And I certainly would suggest that at this point. I approach days like today, day trading, saying, okay, things are really extended. I know the daily chart is due for consolidation. I'm only trading bearish today. If I don't see any clear setups that I like and the bulls keep complete control, then I just don't trade much. And I don't wanna be entering bullish on a day like today because if there were some kind of rug pull or fast drop, then obviously I'm in a bad spot. So on a day like today, where the bears didn't ever actually get much follow through, I do make some bearish entries and I either take tiny profit or tiny loss. And it's the kind of scenario where if today was the daily consolidation, I know those would have been big wins. So I'll gladly take some tiny wins or tiny losses and just say, nope, today wasn't the day and then see what tomorrow brings. So that's essentially what I did today. And one thing that stood out in the morning was seeing XLV, the healthcare sector, double top, at the high of yesterday, which is the all time high, I said, okay, inability to break resistance. Now I'm watching my other two sectors. Does the financial sector or the tech sector show us any weakness? The uh, QQQ was showing us strength at that point in time. And so I was watching XLF. Who's XLF gonna join? Is it gonna be two bears or two bulls out of our three major sectors? And XLF had the test of the high of yesterday, $25. And as soon as that broke with a couple pennies of follow through, then we could have confidence, okay, it's QQQ and XLF on the bull side, and XLV is definitely weaker, but the S&P 500 is just fine when the financial sector and tech sector team up on team bull. So I'm watching the S&P 500 futures chart, and this morning it was just a very simple if-then statement. If the hourly 12-period EMA, which has been holding for two days at this point, if that is support, then the bulls have complete control. We held it first thing this morning for a confirmed bull flag. We held it again for a higher low and we held it again at the end of the day. Now, if that level is lost overnight, that just means zoom out and watch for a four hour higher low to form. But I am watching a bit of an hourly rising wedge here. 
at the end of the day. Resistance line, uptrending support line, and I had it drawn here and we did break bearish under it. And I'm curious to see if we back test and reject from it, looking at it on the half hour time frame. If we were to fail to break that level, it would be just another lower high. And you can see we're pretty much just in a half hour equilibrium at this moment. And this half hour equilibrium will break sometime in the next few hours to give us overnight consolidation or continuation. I would assume that we're gonna see some overnight consolidation to look for a four hour higher low. That being said, it could very easily be a four hour bull flag. So I personally am more cash, as I said, I think in yesterday's video, I'm more cash than I've been in a very long time. And that just makes me comfortable. I sit down at my desk every morning and I look for day trades to try and keep tacking on to base hit wins. And aside from that, we'll be watching to see how this equilibrium plays out from here and to see if we're going to form a lower high and remain in this bigger picture tightening range. Spy bulls do have volume, but it's also four gap ups in a row, which is pretty darn extended. IWM, V-shaped to higher high, 164.24 breaking, and that was our resistance. Again, always wanna keep an eye, especially in this market environment, like I mentioned, the bull breaks with a lack of follow through is always something I'm keeping an eye on now. And look at these, this resistance line going all the way back to the initial high of the bounce. And here we are about to test it right now. So just something to keep an eye on. Again, I would have to be a really aggressive bear to be going after that and trying to make a play off of it, but it is something to pay attention to. It's pretty good looking, pretty good looking chart. Resistance test approaching. QQQ, so also seeing multiple gaps in a row, not as many as SPY, 297.46 is the key resistance. So that's another clue as well. Just like I'm watching on the five minute time frame and the first 20 minutes of trading for our sectors to give us some clues, we can do so on the daily time frame. If SPY breaks that resistance of 354.02 and heads up to 355.50, but QQQ fails to break 297.46, we know not to trust that the S&P 500 bulls will get significant follow through on that resistance break. So that's something to be watching for as well. Do we see our sectors breaking their key levels as well? XLV, double top at the high, close near the low, and tons of space for a daily higher low to form on any consolidation. So no major red flags here. Again, at this point, any weakness that we see should be expected for just daily consolidation. And the next time the market goes red, they're going to be you know, making a reason for it saying, oh, well, this just happened with the vote counting. So the market must be reacting to this. No, absolutely not. The market is doing what the market does and it's overextended and we know consolidation is due at any point and it doesn't need a reason to consolidate. The financial sector confirmed a daily trend change. So now I zoom out to the weekly time frame because we're in a really good equilibrium here as well. And that resistance is 2559 and we are about 2% away from that level. So it's coming into play. And again, same thing. If, if SPY and QQQ break their weekly resistance, but XLF does not break it, then we know SPY is probably not going to get a ton of follow through. The biotech sector, new all-time high today, but a little bit toppy with the healthcare sector. And if we break 121.04 tomorrow, we will confirm an hourly downtrend and we'll just zoom out and look for a daily higher low to form. And again, we can be watching these uptrend lines because we're rejecting from them, even though we're in blue sky, just something to keep an eye on. SMH, V-shape, new all-time highs, semiconductors were stronger than the tech sector this entire time, and that weekly chart stayed very confident. Look at that EMA 12. It is a beauty holding that level and then a new all-time high with no red flags in the short term, tons of space for a daily higher low to form. Right there, there's some resistance. We're gonna have to check back in next video to all of these uptrending resistance lines that we've drawn now, three of them, to see how they play out. T-A-N. So remember XBI gave us the volume clue three days ago where that volume really stood out as the bounce was just getting going? TAN did that yesterday. And I would have to go back and watch yesterday's video to see if I mentioned it. But to me, it feels like I missed it. And this is the kind of move where if I'm looking for a weekly higher low and EMA 12 support, 
and I see this move yesterday and the bounce starts to get going and I say, okay, I'm watching for a confirmed hourly trend change and then we gap up open like this, that move goes without me. And I just have to say, well, that was a very unusual setup. That doesn't happen often and bummer because I wanted an entry, but I'm gonna go find the next trade because this is an unusual, I, I guess this, this would be an island reversal, gap down into a gap up and just rocket ship. Essentially, the solar sector doing what I would have expected to it have done yesterday. That lower open definitely threw things off a little bit, but it was just flushing people out before we're heading back to test that high of 78.36 to try and confirm that weekly bull flag. So SMH and the solar sector during this whole period of consolidation in the last two weeks, we knew they were standing out stronger than everybody else. We knew we were looking for a weekly high or low, and now we're getting that follow through. The VIX trying to set a bullish reversal candle on the daily, but we know next time we bounce, we're just looking for a daily lower high because we have sold off massively at this point. The dollar, we were watching for a four hour equilibrium and the bulls could not pull that off. We just fell right through support. And this is now a common theme. Big bull moves on the daily time frame with an inability to confirm daily trend changes. We did it here, straight to a lower low, and we've now done it here, and we haven't gotten to that lower low yet, but we're right there. And it's the notable inability to confirm daily trend changes that is keeping all of our asset bulls confident. Metals, crypto, stocks, love this weak dollar. And if we break 92.47, it's a potential monthly bear flag. Confirm it. And if we get another leg down, again, assets, love it. Gold, big day for gold today. Weekly trend change confirmed. Odds of a monthly bull flag increase significantly. Monthly inside bar bull break. And we've now gone from monthly consolidation back into continuation or attempting continuation. We're heading up now to test some resistance levels. The daily time frame, it's a bit too extended for me to make an entry. If I were an aggressive bull, I would definitely have a position right now, but I'm patient. And this four hour time frame being overextended and we had the FOMC today, that really wasn't much of an event for me just watching the five minute time frame for SPY. But knowing that that was coming, I don't want to make an entry into an overextended bull move. So for me personally, I'm going to look for an entry on the next daily consolidation and just have a swing position, put my stop under 1848. If 1848 breaks and I stop out, I get back some of my profit from earlier in the year. And I'm fine with that because it's not a monthly bull flag. I was wrong. But if I make an entry and use that level as my stop and this level holds, we're going to see new all-time highs. It's very simple. Either we break the support or we break that resistance for all-time highs. So I like this monthly setup enough that I am looking for an entry now using that level as my stop. Silver has not broken bullish yet. It had a little bit more work to do, 25.56, but it's right there. And I would assume it's going to follow gold and break that resistance level. Just need a little bit of follow through there. And the monthly time frame, not as convinced that we can head straight to a higher high as that's 20% away for a new high of this move. And if we were going to look at gold, bulls here need 7%. That is a very big difference. So if we're going to see silver hit a higher high, this XAU XAG chart needs to break down for a monthly bear flag. And if the dollar is a monthly bear flag, it's possible this is a monthly bear flag because we've been watching the correlation with this relationship and the dollar for months at this point. And what this chart is showing us, who's stronger, gold or silver? If it's going down, gold, or I should say, if it's going down, silver is stronger than gold. So this whole move, silver exploded relative to gold and if we confirm the monthly downtrend on the dollar and on this pairing, silver will catch up to gold and break that high as well. And the percentage gains will be more significant. So it's worth paying attention to this to see whether we're looking at gold or silver as the best place to put your bucks. Miners, again, just like solar, we knew we were looking for a daily lower high. We got it. We closed at the low of the day. An aggressive bull might be saying, all right, tomorrow, meaning today, I'm gonna look for an entry on that daily high or low and start scaling an initial position. And then you wake up to a gap up open and then just a surge. And there is nothing wrong with completely missing that move. Because again, this is not usual 
as far as how things play out. And I am perfectly fine just chalking it up to an unusual move. I missed it. The trade didn't come to me. Going to find something else. That being said, those of you that did get this move, congratulations. Oil looking a little toppy, the four hour time frame tightening up, close to rolling over a little bit, pretty much using the four hour EMA is the way that I'm using the S&P 500 futures hourly EMA here after hours. And if we break this support of 39.17, we know to zoom out because daily consolidation will be underway and we'll be looking for that daily higher low. Natural gas continuing to pull back, little mini bear flag. It's hard to see here because it happened so fast. But if you zoom into the 12 hour time frame, you can see just a weak bounce that did have a four hour trend change, little higher low and higher high. Trend change with no follow through straight into a pullback means cautious of the, of the bear flag. And obviously that ended up confirming. So now at this point on this kind of move, I need to be, for me to be comfortable because of the lack of support established on the way up, I need to wait for that weekly EMA 12. And it doesn't make me extremely confident when that level's in play. It definitely just makes me more confident because there's something to go off of. And that's the case for SMH and TAN on their weekly timeframes where we ran real hard and then we pulled back very significantly. So there's not a ton of support in this area. So that weekly EMA definitely with nothing else nearby is my guide when looking for higher lows on strong uptrends. And Bitcoin, there's your breakout. Oh, nice. We're recovering from a little pullback. Hourly EMA 12 here. Just beast mode. Highest price in years. No resistance up here. All-time highs, 20K. Still a ways away, but this is obviously a huge surge of a move. And just another point in favor of asset bulls. Feeling euphoria. There's no doubt about that. And again, if this keeps up in all of our assets, it definitely is a red flag for me to remain cautious because the last thing I want to be doing is jumping on the side of the boat where everybody is as if everything's exploding to the upside. So remain cautious and protective out there. Congrats to the bulls. Use stop losses if you want to protect these gains. Bears remain patient. If you are going in bears, certainly be using stop losses. And we will see you next week. Have a good rest of your Thursday an hourly tightening range. AP8. Whoa. What you want? APHA is a potential bear flag on the daily time frame. It's a weak bounce. If we break the lows of today on any names that look like bear flags, we are going to be looking to confirm those bear flags with lower lows. Bro. Really messing with my flow.